Yeah, I yeah. think so. OK, I. Labour to say sorry for Iraq war. There is a little more inside. Uh, I page four, Corbyn to say sorry for Labour taking Britain into Iraq war, indicating it may happen at the party conference. Now, we understand from his spokesman tonight that might not necessarily be the case. Yes, there might be an apology at some stage, but yeah. it won't be at the conference. I don't think this is a new story. I remember seeing this a few weeks ago, this idea that, that when Jeremy Corbyn became leader, one of the things he might do is apologise uh, for, for the Labour Party's involvement in the Iraq war and various other military conflicts where the party voted in favour of of course, Corbyn, as we know, since 1983, MP for Islington North, has always remained massively true to his principles. He's, you know, he doesn't like war. He's anti-war. He supports the ND. He doesn't like nuclear weapons, and always his voting record backs this up. So it's, it's, it's an interesting position for him to find himself in. And if you ever talk to Labour activists or councillors, and particularly people who campaigned in the election earlier this year, one of the things that still happens on the doorstep is. Well, you took us into this kind of war. Where is the evidence, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So you can see the the philosophy and the thinking behind. Well, you know what? Let's apologise, draw a line, and move on. But of course, what this this particular piece is pointing out, they're saying there is a concern that some people might interpret that as the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn being quite soft on security and soft on the security Which of the Which is the, the, the thing that maybe David Cameron and the Tories want to try and exploit. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Achilles Hill. And, and yeah. I, I think beyond kind of peace and reconciliation, I don't think Jeremy Corbyn has come up with much in the way of foreign policy. And I don't think anyone in the whole world thinks he was in any way responsible for the Iraq war. So it's one of those slightly crazy yeah. apologies. Yeah. One, one of the other tricky things that it points out there is um, the decision on an emergency debate over whether Labour should support the renewal of Trident. Now, speaking to Faisal Islam, our political editor, indicated that there will be a discussion, whether that will move to a, a vote, but he's not indicating whether he will actually say to Labour, I want you to yeah. scrap the nuclear deterrent. Well, he because can't, because he has to. He's discovering the realities of being a leader. Compromise. And, <laughs> uh, and he knows that most of the Parliamentary Labour Party and most MPs don't accept an enormous number of his policies, and particularly when it comes to defence and uh, Trident and so on. And Cameron will have no, no difficulty in painting yeah. him as someone who is unpatriotic, yeah. Uh, not interested in defending It's going to be an country, interesting uh, conference, isn't it? And I think his speech on Tuesday will be, be one to, to watch because I think he's got a lot of work to, to do. Okay, I'm just going to move over to... Uh, there's something quite intriguing there on the right-hand side of the page as well from Yvette Cooper, um, warning of a generation of women driven out of politics and quite specifically basically talking of bullying and misogynistic attacks mm. undermining uh, the leadership election. Mm. Um, I mean, that again could be quite damaging, couldn't it? I think, it's, I think it is very hard for... I think it's hard for everyone in the public eye, actually. That pe there are a lot of people on social media who are extremely bitter and think that the people they are commenting about have no feelings at all. And women do get a very tough ride. And um, any woman who even appears on TV, you often get torrents of abuse about your appearance and everything else. But yeah. I do think if you're planning to go into politics, you need to be a bit tougher than that. I mean, because she's saying... She, Defeated candidate tells of frightening abuse during Labour leadership contest. Well, that, that's sort of taking it to well, another degree. Well, that's true, but I don't think anyone has on Twitter who has said that they will do nasty things ever does those things. Right, and it's they, just, they're that's just more the, the nature of bedroom. social media. I, yeah. I think so. people watching will take a view that you've articulated, which is we live in a world of social media, and if you yeah. put yourself up in some kind of public position, then sadly there are going to yeah. be people who will attack you. I'm still trying to think, what, what was the song that came out that was... Anyway, <laughs> that's You're your, your pub own. quiz You're question for tonight. Yeah. Christina and Duncan looking as baffled as I am. However, let's go to the Guardian front page. We'll match Osborne and live within our means, says Labour. Really? Yeah. Well, this is an extremely Gosh. surprising announcement because nothing that was said during Jeremy Corbyn's leadership campaign would have suggested anything like that. It would have seemed that their spending plans were going to kind of triple the deficit, actually. So goodness only knows how they plan to do this, particularly since um, they talk about investing, mm. uh, which is another word for borrowing, actually. So yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, this is an exclusive story on the front page of The Guardian, and there's more insight as to what's going to come out over the, the Labour Party conference in Brighton. What I think is interesting about this, I mean, John McDonnell, who's the new shadow yep. chancellor, 
um, you know, this is his first opportunity to show some credibility. Um, and what, what I think some pundits will say, and again, it goes back to what we said earlier uh, about the idea of Corbyn possibly saying, sorry for the Iraq war, there's been concerns that the Labour might be soft on national security, da 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 da. Here it's about economic credibility. Mm. And, and there's this view that Labour. Um, perhaps didn't win the election because they couldn't prove that they, they were the people who could control the purse strings. So this is perhaps a tactic to say, well, you know what, you know, we can live within our means, mm. we understand the importance of prudence, etc., etc. Um, whether or not it'll work is anyone's guess. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that it's, it's trying to draw the sting uh, from what will be the Tory attack on the mm. issue maybe of Trident, defence, and as you say, you know, the economic yeah. credibility, it, which Ed Balls indicated, lost them the election. Yeah, view. and one of the Tory attack lines on the run-up to the elections was, you know, don't give the car keys back to yeah. the, the, yes, the, the exactly. government who caused the economic crash. Now, you know, we can sit here all night and debate whether or not that's a justified remark, but you can argue it, wasn't a ve it was quite an effective tactic. Well, all the polling shows that it absolutely was yeah. on economic stuff, that, that Labour really lacked credibility. But I think one thing that's going to be fascinating about this conference is that the, the leadership campaign was all about addressing the Labour Party mm -hmm. and this is also about addressing the nation as well so they have to try and shift their tone which yeah, is going to be quite a Yeah, and when you talk about challenge. leadership of course that would be uh, possibly the Prime Minister in the future or not mm -hmm. as page 10 of the mail indicates because at the bottom there already indications of noise is off. Uh, this is from uh, Heidi Alexander, yeah. uh, Shadow Health Secretary uh, telling activists during the Labour leadership campaign in her constituency, Mr Corbyn would cause division within the party and make Labour unelectable. I mean, this Full is stop. kind of, yeah, yeah, but it's sort of a statement of the obvious. And this was actually before Heidi Alexander was appointed to the shadow health role. And, and apparently now she, she backs him. <laughs> well, you kind of would if you'd accepted that job. I mean, you can't help but acknowledge that the newspaper in question has chosen a picture of Jeremy Corbyn that, that perhaps is not the most flattering to suggest that you know, the, the, the unspoken question... Well, could... there, are, there are flattering photographs of Mr Corbyn? Well, there? I think there are some, but, you know, could this man ever be Prime Minister? And this, this, is, this gets us into the whole area about personality politics, I think, which is now... Well, which is the, the job of a leader, some would say. Yeah, yeah, was, uh, you look at a person and go, well, could that man, could you see him or her standing outside Downing Street? Well, acor well according to the, the latest poll, he's got the... He's the first um, Labour leader for many, many years who has a negative rating before he but is, isn't there another issue here and that is the whole nature of leadership where he keeps talking about wanting a mm. debate and opening up issues such as prime minister's questions mm. to others and a Labour Party spokesman yesterday acknowledging that differences of opinion will emerge at the conference. Yeah. Well, one, the sort of mantra has been never actually put your divisions on show. No. The leader leads and everyone else follows. Well, the, be well, the thing doors. is, he never expected to be Labour leader. I mean, all of this is. It, did you ever see that film Being There, where suddenly a gardener is the president of the United States? Oh, Peter you know? Sellers, Chauncey yes, Gardner. Yes. And uh, it, to me, it's got that ring to Plant it. Plant the seeds and the flowers will grow in the garden. Exactly. And it's taken as political exactly. philosophy. Yeah. Exactly. It's well, about that. Level of but there, there's one line here which I think sums up the challenge. She says, and this is uh, this is Heidi Alexander. Whilst we might like the rest of the country to think in the way that voters in left-leaning parts of London do. The truth exactly. is they don't. The challenge is, is that appeal outside of exactly. London and traditional exactly. Labour-leaning yeah. areas. OK. Uh, Times page four is your next. You're really testing me with your inside pages, aren't you? <laughs>